I'm Teresa. Welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to talk about Simplicity 8294, which is this dress that I have behind me right now. I used a cotton blend fabric that has a little bit of a stretch to it. It did end up looking like the dress on the pattern. However, it was really big on me. It just kind of hung on me. It didn't curve to my form at all. So I needed to make a lot of alterations to get the dress to where I'd be comfortable wearing it out in public. Luckily, because the fabric is so busy, you can't really tell unless you are really good at sewing and then you'd probably be able to tell really easily that I did make a lot of alterations. There are a few things that really still bother me, but as I said before, I don't really think anybody's gonna notice it unless they're right up close and personal. I'm gonna turn the dress inside out so that you can um, see it a little bit better. It's easier to tell on the inside than it is on the outside. Um, okay, so the first alteration that I had to do on this pattern is on the bust line um, for here because the sleeve came out really f the sleeve came out really far, so you would have been able to see my my bra if I would have left it. So I took it and pinched it and put a dart in this way. And I did that here, <clears throat> here as well. And the, yeah, it's a little lopsided. I thought it was even at the time, but I was a little bit off. Um, now, once I did that, that created another problem to where it made me look like I had really pointed boobs. Sorry if that's TMI. Um, so in order to fix that, I gathered it just a teeny tiny bit here and I sewed just a little bit down here and I connected the two darts together. Okay, once that was done, I put the zipper in and I put the dress on and it was like a big bag. Like it did not hug my form at all. So um, the first thing I did was I gathered the top part of the dress here, because um, that's not supposed to be together. These two um, edges aren't supposed to be touching. They're supposed to be like an inch or so between there. Well, I just squished them together and folded the fabric over toward the sleeve this way, and I sewed it down, um, hoping that it would stay on my shoulders. That did not work. Okay, now to get it to fit my waist, I took two pinches about up to my first knuckle on both sides and I folded them over. Um, I folded them over towards the inside of the dress. Now that made it fit my middle, but it made this part in the back come out and my shoulders were still falling, um, were still falling down. So then I had to take a pinch here, about a finger length pinch, and I sewed a dart down the center, which is also a little bit lopsided but luckily, as I said before, the fabric's really busy, so it's hard to notice that. Um, yeah, so I took a pinch and I just tapered it down to the waist here. Um, and that seemed to solve the problems that I had with it. When I'm wearing it, it still kind of comes out a little bit up at the top, but for all the adjustments that I had to make to get it to where I'd be comfortable wearing it in public, I'm okay with it. I don't, I don't really mind. And I can always put a sweater over the top of it. Um, the other alterations I did was I added a pocket. Just a string. Um, I would have liked to have a pocket on both sides, but because the zipper's on the side, it wouldn't have worked. Also, when I altered the back here and made it so that it fit my waist, it pulls the seam line, so the seam line kind of goes at a diagonal now, and I kind of got to reach my hand way far back to stick my hand in the pocket, which is a little inconvenient, but again, it's, some, it's an inconvenience that I can live with. And then also, if I, I'm trying to lose a little bit of weight here, and if I'm successful, I will need to take the waist in anyways, so I'll just take that in at the front, and gather it in, and that should even out that diagonal um, sideline. I'm hoping, <laughs> but we'll see. 
So yes, this is my dreaming, dreaming of springtime dress. I hope to grow to love it, but I don't love it yet. <laughs> um, also, I ditched the sash. I had made a sash. It's around here someplace. Oh, there it is. Hold on. So this is the sash that I made with it. I decided that, well, I think I've decided that I'm not going to wear the sash. I don't know. I'll try it on again and see what I think. But I'll turn the dress inside. I'll turn it the right side out again and put the sash on it just so that you can see what it looks like with the sash on. Um, oh, and also, this zipper is pretty pointless. I can take the dress on and off and not even touch the zipper, but my waist is pretty big. If you have a small waist, you might need the zipper. But luckily, mine is nice and round. <laughs> So it's easy. Oh, there's one alteration I forgot to mention. Um, so it's a little lopsided still. Okay, so in the back here, sorry, my daughter's pulling on it a little bit. But when I had pulled these in and I sewed along the seam line here, it pulled the dress in a way to where there was a big pocket here. So I had to fold it over a little bit and so and even still like it kind of pulls it out a little bit because there's so much fabric right here it's just not right and this is like if I do decide that I want to wear the sash with it it'll probably be to cover this up so that it's not noticeable and I think it would look nice with a blue sash instead of a black one I, I used a black one because I have a black sweater or I made a black sash because I have a, a black sweater that I thought that I would wear with this on days when, you know, it's not quite warm enough to wear it without anything. Okay, so here it is with the sash. You can see that covers it up. That covers it up really good, actually. There you go. Simplicity 8294. All right, let's get sewing. To make this project, you will need a sewing machine, thread, 14 inch zipper, three yards of fabric, five eighths yard of contrast fabric. I'm making a size 24, and the pattern calls for a 46 inch bust, 39 inch waist, and a 48 inch hip. And mine is a 45 inch bust, 39 inch waist, and a 45 inch hip. So some of the reviews said that the bodice runs big, so I may have to do some adjustments, but I'll take those as they come. I'm using fabric from my stash that was gifted to me. Unfortunately, it's in two pieces. So I'll be cutting my pieces out a little bit different than the direction said to. I've already washed and dried my fabric. I lay it out and I use plain old rocks to weigh down my pattern and then a rotary cutter to cut them out. Cutting things out tends to be a bit tedious. It's definitely the worst part of sewing in my opinion. I enjoy the actual sewing part because you get to see the progress and it's a lot more fun. Here I'm cutting out the contrast fabric that will eventually be the sash. Whenever a pattern has darts, I like to transfer those markings onto my fabric. Here I'm using blue tailor's chalk to do that. I pin my pattern down at the top so it won't shift and I fold the pattern up. I mark the top point of my dart, fold the pattern down and mark the bottom of my dart. Then I use my ruler to connect them. I'm only showing one side of making the darts, but I marked both on the front and I marked both on the back. Dress A, step one. Stay stitch neck edge in bodice front. Stay stitch neck edge and make dart in bodice back. Press darts towards center. Here I'm stay stitching the neck edge on the front piece and then on the back. Next, I pinned the darts on the back piece, making sure to match the chalk lines from earlier. Then I sewed them down, making sure to start at the bottom and sew upwards. 
Remember not to back stitch at the point, so all the way off your fabric and tie a knot with the leftover thread. Once the darts were sewn, I took it over to my ironing pad and ironed them down facing inward. For view A, you skip steps 2 and 3 and jump right to step 4. Step 4, make dart seams and bodice front. Press the seams toward the center, stitch bodice front to bodice back at shoulders and right side seams. Stitch front to back at left side seam above the notch. Back stitch at notch to reinforce the seam. So now I'm pinning the darts on the front part of the bodice. Here I'm sewing along the chalk lines from earlier, closing the darts. And I'm finishing the raw edges with my overlock machine, and then pressing the darts down so that they lay toward the center of the bodice. Now it's time to sew the front piece to the back at the shoulder seams and the sides. On the left side, you only sew a little bit on the top because that's where you will eventually put in the zipper. I really didn't like how the fabric sticks out underneath my arm, so I decided to put a dart in. I drew my darts in with chalk and I sewed them and ironed them down. I'm not super happy with the darts I made. Luckily there's so much going on with the fabric that I don't really feel like the weirdness of the cut is noticeable. <clears throat> it kind of makes my boobs look funny, but I don't know. If I'm self-conscious with it, I'll just wear a sweater. And then I finished off the raw edges with my overlock machine. Neckband A. Stitch center back seam of neckband. Fold neckband in half lengthwise with wrong sides together. Press. 6. On inside, pin neckband to neck edge matching centers and placing small dots at shoulder seams. Stitch in a 3 8 inch seam. Step 7. Turn neckband outside. Press. Stitch close to press edge of neckband. So here I'm sewing the neckband together, creating a circle. Then I took it over to my ironing pad, folded it with the wrong sides together, and I ironed it down. Making sure that the middle seam of the neckband is center in the back of the bodice, I pinned it to the inside neck edge, and I slowly worked my way around. Once it was securely pinned, I took it back to my machine and I sewed it down on the upper edge. Then I took it back over to my ironing pad. I folded the neckband all the way over and I ironed it down, pinning it to the front side of the bodice. Then I sold the folded edge of the neckband down to the bodice. Making sure that I kept my stitches as close to the folded neckband edge as possible. Armhole band A. 13. Stitch ends of armhole band, fold armhole band in half lengthwise with wrong sides together and press. 14. On inside, pin armhole bands to armhole edge, matching underarm seams and notches, placing small dots at shoulder seams. Stitch in a 3 8 inch seam. 15. Turn the armhole band to the outside. Press. Stitch close to press edge of armhole band. Basically, you do the same steps for 13 to 15 that you did for steps 5 through 7, but you do it for the arm edges. I'm not going to walk you through these steps because they're seriously the exact same. Because I put the extra dart in the armhole, I had extra fabric on the armband. Um, I sewed them down and then I sewed the extra fabric together under the arm. I kind of pinched it a little bit and sewed it and then I um, cut off the extra fabric before taking it to my ironing pad and folding the armband over and ironing it and pinning it down.
Then I sewed it down close to the armband's original folded edge as possible, um, just like I did for the neckband. Step 21. Stitch right side seams of skirt front and back sections together. Stitch left side seam from lower edge to notch. Back stitch at notch to reinforce the seam. Gather upper edge of the skirt front and back between notches. Step 22. With right sides together. Pin the skirt to the bodice at the waistline seam, matching centers and side seams, pulling up gathering stitches to fit. Baste, stitch, being careful not to catch the free edges of the tabs for view B, which we don't need to worry about that, and then press the seams toward the bodice. Before I can begin step 21, I have to make a pocket. I taped two pieces of paper together and I drew a spacious pocket. I cut out my template, I laid it out on my scrap fabric, and then I cut out two pieces. I'm only making one pocket because it has a side zipper. I figured one pocket is better than no pockets, so yeah. Um, to make sure that it was placed right, I pinned my skirt fabric onto Loretta, my dress form, and once they were placed right, I took it over to my sewing machine and I sewed them on with the right sides together at the side seams. Now it's time to do step 21 and sew the skirt together. Um, lay your skirt down with the right sides together, the pockets out, and then sew the side edges of the skirt together. Once the seams are sewn on the side, you make two basting stitches on the waist of the skirt and then you pull the top strings to gather your skirt. The reason you do two basting stitches is just in case one of them breaks when you're trying to gather your skirt edge. Once the skirt is gathered, you pin it onto the bodice, matching the side seams and making sure that the right sides are together and then you sew it together. Step 28, press under 5 8 inch on left side opening edges. Pin closed to zipper under opening edge with tab end at upper end of opening, having edges meet at the center of zipper. Baste. Stitch 1 4 inch each side of center and across the ends using an adjustable zipper foot. Um, and then step 29, mark the length, press up the hem along marking, mark depth of hem, trim evenly, press under 1 4 inch on raw edge, and stitch close to inner pressed edge. I stink at zippers. Just follow the directions the best you can, use your zipper foot, and um, yeah, may the odds be ever in your favor. I haven't sewn the hem of my skirt yet, so I have no footage of me doing it, but here is where you are supposed to put the hem in on your skirt, and that's just a rolled hem. Roll it to whatever length you want and sew it down. Step 31 for sash A. Stitch sash end sections to sash center at notched ends, which is really hard to say. <laughs> Fold sash in half lengthwise with right sides together. Stitch in 3 8 inch, 1 centimeter seams, leaving an opening to turn. Trim seams and corners. Step 32, turn sash, press. Slip stitch opening edges together. Stitch close to all edges. I start the sash by pinning the three pieces together, making sure to pin them with the right sides together. Then I take them over to my machine and I sew them together. Next, I fold the sash in half lengthwise with the right sides together. I didn't bother to pin it. Remember that you need to leave a space to turn it inside out. I only left a small space, maybe about five inches or so. This way it would be easier to sew the whole clothes later. Once that was done, I clipped the corners. 
and then began the long process of turning it right side out. I took a needle and I picked out the corners. Then I ironed it flat making sure that I folded in the raw edges to the inside of the sash. So when I took it over to the machine, it would be really easy to close the hole. I like my top stitches to be a little bit long in length, so I set the stitch length in between a two and a three. And it's a very long sash. <laughs> 